first time I was telling stories, I was too young to even be writing them down yet. I vaguely recall telling one about a book that I had read, and I or, or it had been read to me, and was I could not even tell you what it was about, but I redid it and added a ghost. Anything that I would see in cartoons at at that age that had to uh, do with you know ghosts, uh, you know vampires, werewolves, just fascinated me. And I think as I got older, it just became that level of imagination that I could do whatever I want. If I was to take something like uh, you know a, you know werewolf, because I don't believe they actually exist, I can pull on folklore from all over the world and really add that level of creativity there. First book that I wrote, not my first published novel as is common, I submitted it and the feedback that I got was good plot, good writing, two-dimensional characters. So I really threw myself into, into learning character. And it is so important for these books because what people come back, sure, they come back and say that kept me up all night. It was a great fast-paced read. But what keeps them coming back for the next novel is character. I always say to you new writers, if you've got characters and if you hit a point in the plot and you could make them do A, B, or C and they would do each equally, you don't have a character. A character is somebody that you can say, okay, I've got them trapped in this burning you know, building and the best thing that could happen is they're trapped there trying to save someone. But you've written a character who would naturally escape. Even though it'd be a great plot to have them trapped there, if they would naturally just run for it and leave everyone else, then you have to either let them run for it or block that path because you've always got to, got to have them act in character. So rather than a blog, I will give readers every year a novella and post a chapter, say, every two, uh, two uh, weeks until it's done. And that's something that I really enjoy and it's something I can give back to the, uh, to the uh, readers and uh, I certainly hope it helps uh, promotionally. I really feel that I do owe my readers something because you know I'm doing a job that I dreamed of for my entire life and they keep me doing that job. So the feeling that you can give them something to say thank you, thank you, thank you is great. Somebody who's you know got their first book out there, the advice that I always give them is you're really dividing your time between promoting that one but not forgetting about the next next book. I have seen writers who put everything into promoting the current book and let the next book sort of fall by the you know, wayside. They're doing it in their you know, spare time. And I always say, your best promotional tool is the next book. You've got to make sure of that. You've always got to have, I mean, it's great to have a good first book a good second book that sells really well. But what you're doing is you're building up that readership who then wants your next book. And if the next book is just something that you slap together because you were too busy blog touring for book one, you're going to lose that. You kind of have to get a ways down before you can stumble and they will you know, forgive you. But early on, if you do your first book and it's great and the second one is a massive stumble, it's a little tougher to come back from. <laughs>